Good morning. I would uh, like, uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone here today. I was asked to uh, uh, welcome everyone and to make a few announcements. Uh, they said all I had to do was read, and that, you know, that may be a challenge. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that works. Uh, first of all, uh, today we begin our week of prayer for international missions. You receive prayer folders in the Sunday school. Please use this daily this week. Others are on the table in the entry. Next Sunday, our missionary speaker from Eastern Europe will bring the message, and we will bring our mission office and place it in the chest. That will be next Sunday, December the 12th. Pray about your offering and pray for the missionary. Also, need to remind that uh, this uh, Wednesday at 5.30, we have potluck supper. Uh, Wednesday the 15th uh, is our, our Christmas dinner. Uh, told you with the trifocals this reading was going to be difficult. Uh, 19th, we have, uh, we'll enjoy John and friends. And, uh, of course, we always remember our Christmas Eve vespers coming up. Again, welcome to everyone here today. All right, let's all participate in the call to worship this morning. Blessed be the God of Israel. Would you stand and remain standing for the invocation? <clears throat> that you've given us and Lord we thank you for this season that's coming up when we celebrate the birth of your son and the grace and the salvation that you sent to us through him Lord we pray that we will each feel your presence this morning and in the season and the holidays to come Lord we know that with your presence we will also feel your strength your peace and your guidance be with us today in this service as we lift our hearts and our prayers up to you and to claim you as our lord our creator and our god in your name we pray amen
According to tradition, each candle has a special meaning. We lit the first candle last Sunday, and that candle is known as the hope candle. People in the Old Testament knew that God had promised to send a Savior, and we are filled with hope. The second candle on an Advent wreath is a preparation candle. Listen to a reading from Mark. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, spread the word that Jesus was on his way. Part of our preparation for Christmas can include letting other people know what Christmas is all about, the birth of our Savior. Just as we get our homes and churches ready for Christmas, we also get our hearts ready for baby Jesus. Two candles burning bright, chasing away the darkness from light. Two candles glowing light, the blessings of God giving new sight. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray that our hearts will be ready for your coming through your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to see how you call us to prepare. Amen. Christ, whose glory fills the sky, the everlasting light, the sun of righteousness rise. Shades of night. Come, thou long expected one, in the fullness of your love, and loose this heart bound up in shame, and I will never be the same. So here I wait in hope for you. Oh, my soul's longing through and through, and day spring from my heart go near, and day spring in my heart appear. Dark and cheerless is the morn, until your love in me is born, and joy. So here I wait in hope for you, oh my soul longing through and through, and day spring from on high be near, and day star in my heart appear. So here I wait in hope for you, oh my soul longing through and through. And day spring from on high be near, and day star in my heart appear. So here I wait in hope for you, oh my soul's longing through and through, and day spring from on high be near, and day star in my heart. As we come to this time, one of the things Brother Craig asked me to do was to share that first day's prayer request from our week of prayer. And um, it's in very tiny print. And I'm going to ask my wife to do that. And she's going to share that because she can read that better than I can. Good morning. Churches connect with missionary task. Tina, Tim and Tina Lauterbach and Sean and Shelley Blackston are passionate about equipping and connecting churches with opportunities to serve in Central America and the Caribbean. 
The Louderbacks and the Blackstons serve with the IMB in Panama, and the Louderbacks lead the America's Connect program in Panama. America's Connect was established to provide entry-level ministry opportunities for Southern Baptist churches interested in strategically coming alongside the IMB. Panama was the pioneer country for America's Connect, and trips later extended to Guatemala, Costa Rica, and Brazil. Churches may choose to make multiple trips and send teams to different countries. Sean said that they have been personally encouraged by the teams, especially by churches that are taking their first international trip. Our prayer is that churches will be the first among many who come to work alongside us and that some would choose to build on their experiences in Central America, Sean says. Missions doesn't end when the Connect, America's Connect trip ends. The Louderbacks say they encourage churches to put what they learn on the mission field into practice when they return to the U.S. Pray for inroads for indigenous believers who are re reaching the lost. Pray churches who participate in America's Connect will continue to pr pursue opportunities to serve. Pray the Lord will facilitate more church connections. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. Father, I pray that you will just take the words shared, the song sung, the message proclaimed, and use it just to galvanize our hearts for you. This is such a wonderful time of the year as people's attention or focus on Christmas and Father it is our joy and responsibility to do everything that we can to help them understand why Christmas it's about Jesus it's about your love for us that sent him to us Father, I thank you for those that are sharing your word throughout our world. And Father, for many of our mission personnel, a time like Christmas is a special opportunity to share about Jesus because people there will ask questions about that holiday we have. But Father, this morning, speak to our hearts here now that everything that we do will bring honor and glory to you. I lift up Brother Craig and his recovery, and while I know others are dealing with all kinds of physical ailments, and Father, I thank you for him and Suzanne, their family, and the blessing they are. But Father, I pray that you will just give him a complete and whole recovery soon. For these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This time of the year, we have lots of red decorations that come out, and thanks to many of you who purchased the poinsettias that beautify our sanctuary this morning, and thanks to those who helped get it all put together this week. Let's sing together, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, Thou Didst Leave Thy Throne, and Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
woman and an angel, a promise and a song, a word to grant for any mind to hold, a tax law and a journey, a stable and some straw. These tell the greatest story ever told. Oh, sing glory in the highest. He is come, our great Messiah. Come bow before this awesome mystery. Mighty God and fragile baby, hear a lowly manger hold. And it's still the greatest story ever told. A hillside and some shepherds, a hillside and some shepherds. A blaze of blinding light Angels singing carols in the cold Eternal revelation To men as dull as stone The glorious greatest story ever told. Oh, sing glory in the highest. He is come, our great Messiah. Come bow before this awesome mystery. Mighty God and fragile baby, Hear a lowly manger hold, and it's still the greatest story ever told. Oh, sing glory in the highest, he is come, our great Messiah, come bow before this awesome mystery. Mighty God and fragile baby, hear a lowly manger hold, and it's still the greatest story ever told, and it's still the greatest story ever told. I've known Sandra almost all her life. So we go back a long way. Oh, Thank since you. Since I was five. Yeah. <laughs> I said that almost all of you. And I, and I didn't even tell you how many years that's been. So we'll leave that alone. I do appreciate the opportunity to come and share with you. I wish Craig wasn't sick, though. And, um, but and he sent me a note and he said, any way that you could be there Sunday morning, I said, I'd love to. And um, it's a little awkward to have to preach from a chair. But then I got to thinking on where we're here, uh, all of Jesus' sermons were sitting down. I, everyone I can think of. And he sat and taught and proclaimed the word. I love Christmas time. Don and I love Christmas time. If you have any doubts, just come by our house. <laughs> it's all lit up at night. The lights around the windows and the 
and the bushes in the yard and everything. If you come inside over in one corner is a Christmas tree and our granddaughters decorated it for us. But over in another corner, there is a three-tiered Christmas village set up. And all the things are lit up. and It's neat. And over on the other side by the tree, there's a little small village. And it's got a Christmas train that goes around and around it. And there's always Christmas music playing this time of the year. It started the day after Thanksgiving. Because we celebrate Christmas. We love it. And it's important as we celebrate not to lose sight of why we celebrate. I love the story that I read several years ago. A family, as a part of their family tradition, started when their children were just tiny. Every year on Christmas Day when they had their Christmas meal, they had a birthday cake for Jesus. And they set a plate just as a reminder of Jesus' presence. And later on that afternoon, as things had kind of wind, wound down, someone asked the little five-year-old girl, well, did you get everything you wanted for Christmas? And she says, no, but it wasn't my birthday. You know, she got it. Was it her birthday? We give gifts and we share with one another out of love. And then we look at those gifts, and, but still it's not about us. Ultimately, it's about him. But where did Christmas begin? I want to share a verse of scripture with you that most probably has not been used very often in a Christmas message. But it actually deals with the beginning of Christmas. And it's one you know so well. I'm not going to ask you to turn to it because you can quote it. It says, For God so loved the world... There's your beginning of redemption right there. From the time that man sinned and needed redemption, God put into motion. Why? Because of his great love for you and me. For God so loved. Who did he love? He said he loved the world. That didn't leave anybody out. That he gave. That gift of his son for you and me. As we celebrate Christmas, there's some things I want to emphasize this morning. First of all, we we celebrate a Savior that was promised to us. All through the Old Testament, we find promises of the Savior. I was doing some looking back, and different scholars come up with different figures on the prophecies about Jesus. Some are Maybe a a hint. (laughs) But some are very specific. There are at least 55 times in the Old Testament that God pointed directly to Jesus without... This is hundreds of years before he came. And what God was doing then... He was orchestrating history, moving it toward that time when this Messiah would come. I want to share just a few verses. Like I said, I'm not going to ask you to look back, but in Isaiah 7, 14, it tells us that he would be born of a virgin. We'll get to that verse in a minute. 
Micah 5, 2 says that Bethlehem would be his place of birth. 2 Samuel 7, 12 tells that he would be of the house and lineage of David. <coughs> Isaiah 53, 3 reveals his rejection by his own people. Psalm 69, 8 tells us of his betrayal at the hands of a friend, Judas. Mike, Isaiah 53, 12 shows us that he would be crucified with criminals. Psalm 51, I mean 31, 5 recounts he would be commend his spirit to the Father in death. Psalm 16, 10 speaks of his resurrection from the dead. Psalm 110, verse 1, reveals that he would take his place at the right hand of the Father. <laughs> Promises that God made of the coming Messiah. And so it's easy to see that it's a time to celebrate a Savior promised to us. So God was continually reminding his people that the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior would come. You know what? God always keeps his promises. Always. Now, I'm not a statist statistician, a person, you know, I can do basic math. I made it through algebra, but I never could figure out why they were missing X and Y all the time. I just, I still hadn't found them. But one statistician said that the odds of a prophecy hundreds of years before the event of actually happening is one to one with 17 zeros behind it. Now, I don't know how you would pronounce that big a number. One with 17 zeros behind it. That's if just one was true. But all of them were true. Every one. We celebrate a Savior that was promised and God fulfilled that promise in Jesus Christ. And God is still fulfilling his promises in our lives when he says, I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. I'm with you to the end of the age. What a promise. In my Father's house are many men. If it weren't so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I'm coming again to get you. A promise. God keeps his promises. It just... It ought to excite our hearts when we think about those promises and how God fulfilled them. But not only that, we, we celebrate the Savior born. In Matthew's gospel, I'll flip back over there. It said, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And so all this was done, listen to what it says, so that might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. A promise fulfilled. 
Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being roused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, took to him his wife, and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son. And they called him Jesus, our Savior. A Savior born. Now, Don and I, like y'all, when our children were born, we thought they were the best thing ever. We were some more excited. We were married about six and a half years before our first one came along. We were in Searcy, Arkansas at the time, and this was back before cell phones. And all of a sudden, we had to go to the hospital, and David got there, and we got to trying to call our mothers and couldn't get in touch with any of them. Here we were, proud parents and excited to tell, and nobody would answer a phone down here in Louisiana. After a while, I finally called Linda, my sister, older sister. I said, would you tell mother, <laughs> you know, that she has a grandson? Now, it was, wasn't quite that hectic when Jason came along, but what an exciting time. But I think about our Savior's birth, and wow, what an announcement. Angels from heaven. How many were there? We don't know. But they're out on that hillside as the shepherds were taking care of their flock and had them together that night. The sky lit up. Wow. I got good news for you, folks. Good news for to you. He's born a Savior. Wow. And you know, they said, you know, we got to go see this. We got to go see that baby. And they did. What an announcement. We celebrate a Savior born. So many born, babies are born every day, but this was not just any child. This was the Savior, the promised Messiah. His name is Jesus. Several years ago, uh, our world was blessed by a guy who wrote a song called Mary, Did You Know? Oh, Mark Lowry, he may be as funny as he can be, but oh, God got a hold of his heart when he wrote that. Mary, did you know that your baby boy? Oh, Mary knew a lot because God had revealed it to her, but oh, we celebrate the Savior that was born. But not only that, we celebrate a Savior's example. For Jesus set before us an example of how we're to live. Over here in Luke's gospel in the fourth chapter. As he began his earthly ministry and he came to the temple that day <coughs> and sat down, took the brook, Isaiah, and began to read, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captive, to recover sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are obsessed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He said, this is going to be my, be my ministry. But in it being his ministry, he set the example that we were to follow. The scripture said, in his steps. The things that we witness Jesus doing, 
we're to do. Why well, we got an example. I've always liked to play with woodwork. Always have. I'm not the most creative person on the block. But if I can see what someone else has done, I don't know how many times through the years we've been in craft shows and stuff, and Donald said, you can make that. <laughs> but it's taking something that, well, you look at it, and it's not finished yet. I'm always amazed by these wood carvers that can take a, just a block of wood and look at it and in their mind, they can tell what's inside there. <laughs> it's like the one up in the Ozarks years ago. How do, you, how, do you, how do you take that log and make an Indian out of it? And he says, well, you just cut every way everything that doesn't look like one. Well, it's easier said than done. But in Jesus Christ, we have a perfect example of what life and service is supposed to be. We have a perfect example of what love and forgiveness is supposed to be. How hard was it for him to hang on the cross and say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. But that's our example. Sometimes people may hurt our lives and we need to say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't understand, but I have an example in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that I am to forgive. We have a Savior that set an example for us that we need to celebrate. I get a little dry. I'm not sure if it's all that medicine I take or not, but something is. But not only a savior to follow his example, we we celebrate, we really do celebrate a savior sacrifice. It began in Bethlehem, but it ended on Calvary. For without Calvary and the and his death and resurrection. Bethlehem would be meaningless. For what started in Bethlehem was making its way to Calvary. In the Jewish sacrificial system, those sacrifices had to be made on a regular, timely basis over and over and over, year in and year out. And then all of a sudden, that stopped. Why? God says, I'm going to give you one that can never be replaced or surpassed. It's one for all time. His name is Jesus. It's a time to celebrate a Savior's sacrifice. We've got so much to celebrate this time of the year. It's Christmas. We need to sing our hymns and praise. We need to look as we see the, the lights and trees and all the greenery. And like I said, I love it. But it needs to bring our hearts and our minds back to Jesus. the love that we share with our family on Christmas as we give and receive gifts, we need to be reminded that we do that because of the greatest gift of all that was given for us. It didn't come wrapped in a brightly colored package with ribbons 
But there he was in a feed trough in a stable, wrapped in cloths, some sort. But the Savior of the world was born. And we celebrate. Are you celebrating like you need to? I have heard it said, and you probably have too, and I hope you haven't said it. But I've heard people in the hustle and bustle say, I'll be glad when this Christmas season's over with. They've lost sight of what it's all about. I read the story one time about folks got in an elevator at the Christmas season. There was packages and stuff. And someone in the elevator said something about being glad this would go with what's the big fuss anyway. Someone said, well, God made a big deal out of it. God made a big deal out of it. Yes, we need to make a big deal out of it. Are you celebrating like you need to? Or do you need to say, Lord, forgive me. I've let other things get in the way of celebrating my Savior. Maybe you're here, but you've never excited accepted that gift of Jesus as your own Savior. Don't come to this Christmas season without Jesus in your heart. If you're here and you've never given your heart to him, would you listen and let his Holy Spirit speak to you right now? Would you give your heart to Jesus? us to stand and pray and then we're going to have our time of invitation Father as we come to these moments these are your moments Father speak to our hearts about where we are in relationship to what we celebrate right now Father I do pray the first one here this morning that's never given their, given their heart to you as Lord and Savior that they'll do that today. Father, soften our hearts to the world around us so that we can share with them a Savior promise, a Savior that has come, a Savior that's more than just a baby in a manger but our Lord and our Christ our Emmanuel with us Father guide us now in these moments of invitation may we say yes to you as your Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts for these things I pray in Jesus precious name Amen to my heart Lord Jesus speak that my soul may hear speak to my heart Lord Jesus come every heart and 
thank you again for the opportunity to be here. There will be a group of us here tomorrow night. We have our annual Christmas fellowship over here in the fellowship. And thank you for allowing us to do that. Uh, I think we got 74 signed up as of 30, so we're going to have a good group over there. And uh, pray for Brother Craig. Uh, is he, I'm hoping Suzanne hadn't been affected yet. I hadn't, hadn't heard, but uh, hopefully not. And uh, Brother Paul Perry and his wife Sue both have been dealing with this COVID as well. So continue to remember them in prayer. I've got a few more months to go before I can get my hips, so y'all just keep me on your prayer list. Uh, and I said, uh, by the time I get it, it'll been a year since I've been without a hip, so I'm gonna have to learn to walk again. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but I'm looking forward to that. I really am. But uh, I told somebody here not too long ago. I said, I, I'm really not as decrepit as I look. I, it's just. <laughs> I just got that one missing part right now. But uh, thank you again just for the, the privilege of being here and sharing with you. Anything else? Yep. Go in God's grace. Thank you for your service, and uh, we appreciate your sacrifice.